All right, so are you ready to receive the word of God? Yes. yes. Everyone? Yes. Sure? Yes. yes. Great, wonderful. So let's join our hands together as we welcome Brother Rajan in the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shall we just say a short prayer? Our Father Lord, we thank you this time, Lord. Thank you for your presence here, Lord. Thank you for your people here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Now, our Father Lord, as we come at this time, Lord, to receive your word, Lord, through your servant, Lord, who you have chosen, you have anointed, you have blessed, Lord. Let it be, Lord, that every word which comes out of his mouth will be from you, for your people, Lord. Yes. So, Lord, we just want to bless Brother Raju, Lord, as he takes on this, this big responsibility, Lord. And we thank you and we bless him, Lord. Bless, I bless, Lord, each one of us who is here, Lord. Let us help us, Lord, focus only on you. Let nothing distract us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just submit this time into your hands. Have it your way. In your name, Lord, we say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you. Oh, sister. <coughs> Good In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you all, and uh, happy, Easter. happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Okay, thank you. And happy birthday to you all. New life. <laughs> New life, yes. Do you believe? Yes. yes. So happy birthday. Thank you. Let us rejoice. Hallelujah. So let me also come before the Lord. I submit myself before the Lord. Father, as I stand before you, Lord, I submit all the prayers that are said here today. And cover me with your presence. Fill this church with your spirit. Open our heart to receive your word with reverence and love, with joy and with rejoicing spirits. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, do you believe in the resurrection? Yes. yes. Do you believe in Jesus' resurrection? Yes. yes. And if yes, how and why? <coughs> so, this is what we are going to discover today. And when you believe in the resurrection, so what happens to us? What is the difference before and now? So the people who face the day of the resurrection, there was a lot of what is fear. 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 Yes. And what came first? Fear or excitement? Fear. Or joy? It's fear. So about you and me. So let's go into the scriptures. Today mostly we meditate on most of the verses. I need to do right. Have you Last one. I'm you have here. Okay. You want me to send? No, no, no. Oh, I'm not very confused to that. <laughs> yeah. But today I thought. Yeah, that's fine. I was. <laughs> yeah, you can read this. Here, go. <coughs> Early on, yeah. early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out from the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in at the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Simon Peter arrived just after him. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The cloth that had been around Jesus' head was rolled up, lying separate from the linen cloths. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. What did he believe? That Jesus had resurrected. Is it? 
What did Peter believe? But the woman said they've taken him up, the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they So what did the woman say? So she felt that he his body had been robbed. She felt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she believed. Mm -hmm. She felt, That's, she believed. Yes. And what did she say all the way? How did she go to Peter? Running. Running, right? I mean, so yeah. then. Hmm. So she went and told Peter what? They have taken him out, so not that that someone has removed him, and we don't know where they put him. So she is still thinking he is a body that is dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true, right? The body yeah, is yeah. stolen. Yes. They removed. Yes. She said, and yes. what the disciples? They ran for what? They ran to check it out. Check it, them. yeah. And then they also realized that. Um, it's not there. Yeah. It's not there. And then? The word is The word ends that. Yeah. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw unbelief. I don't know who is he now, the first disciples or the second yeah. disciples. But what we understand here, believed what? Believed? Jesus is? Stolen. Stolen. Yes. Okay, so of course, if you read further, then she will see the Lord speaking to her, and then yeah. she will go with the, the title. What we said actually, they go with the fear and joy, yeah. you know, confusion that fear of even seeing Jesus, a fear of that Jesus' body was missing, missing, and the joy of receiving the cry. That's how the yeah. but my point here is that but we started with the fear, yeah. with the doubt, yeah. right. And that is what happens, perhaps, we need to reflect in our life. And so we know also a lot about God in our life. We heard every day or every week we experience. But when the challenges come, circumstances come, where we need to believe, and we perhaps first we will end up in fear or the doubt. It is not wrong, okay? It's our human nature, right? So. Next verse. So now, Father, say anything. Okay, so the resurrection is um, covered by all the Gospels, right? Yeah. All the Gospels cover. I just want to pick up the, the opening points. What is said in the Matthew? What is said? He is on here, he has been raised. He is? No, not, not, not here. here. Not here. But he has been raised. Wait. Second, Luke. He is not here. He has risen. Mark. He has been raised. He has been here. raised. He is not here. So the one what we read now is in John's gospel, right? The woman went first and they yeah. saw, and out of fear she ran and said. But all the other gospels, it, they spoken. Who spoke to her? Who spoke to the woman? Who said? An angel. The angels. Right? So, let's, from this itself, <clears throat> it's important in our life, who is speaking to you, or who is speaking to me? And whom do we listen? Yes. And what we listen? Because our faith or our fear rises, <coughs> our doubt rises from what we hear from others. Yes. And who is that person? The East, the influencer, is it good or a bad? An angel or evil, evil spirit or wicked spirit. <coughs> so even though the resurrection, right? Even though the angel spoke, even though Jesus um, goes and appears to them, touches them, have times with them, still those who have the fear, the fear continued till the ascension. Okay. So that doubt even continues till now. Yes. Even today. Is it really Jesus resurrected? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. If resurrected, then why? Like whenever there is a calamity, some challenges <coughs> happen, is there really God? So, I ask the question, so what is your faith? What is your understanding? That do you believe in the resurrection? So why and how? Is it because? So they have the reasons to believe. 
the angel spoke, the angel said, the Mary Magdalene first heard that she thought there is nobody, you and me would do the same. Right? She ran and then she came back and saw the Jesus. So she would go back and say again, I have seen the Lord. Mm -hmm. So what is your, who influenced, how do you know that Jesus is risen? Strategy. Yeah, if you have yes. the answers. I would say from tangible experience of um, interaction with Jesus, like, you know, there will be certain things that I would um, pray, and then I would see the hand of God move, so I knew that He was real, beyond. And it may not be in, in the way I expected it, but every time there would be some response. Most of the time, sometimes it would take longer, but I realized that, to me, that experience with God, that exchange with Him, there was no shadow of doubt in my heart that He was real. Hmm. And Thank then from hearing other people's <coughs> testimonies. Okay. So hearing others' testimony yeah. and your personal experience. Yes. That's your strong evidence for you that um, Lord is risen. Good. Any others? Hmm. Our experience, we are living testimony. Okay, very so good. many things that uh, is, we know ourselves that it was not possible. Hmm. But turning to God, it just happens. Things. Hmm. Well, good. What else? So sometimes our experience can be very subjective. Right? That means your experience is your experience. Yeah. But how about others? How do you believe it? This is true for your experiences. Jesus' resurrection is for eternity. Right? So how do you believe that it is beyond your experience even for others? Even others, those who don't believe it, then still we, you, I mean you believe that this is true. Right? Anybody else? I have seen God even use an unbelieving person for His purpose, and that has so blown my mind away. Hmm. That even when a person totally denies Him, God has used that that person even to fulfill His purposes. So it's just such undeniable, you know, reality that He's real. I, I sometimes feel that how can people not see it? Hmm. That's how. So do you believe in the resurrection if it wasn't in the Gospels? If it was not mentioned? If it was not, not mentioned in the, in the details? Right? Do you still believe that Christ is risen? You mean if somebody shared it with us and we didn't read this? It's not in the Gospel at all. These chapters were remote. Okay. With the crucifixion uh, ends and say on the third day, as as the as per the scriptures, Christ rose, and the salt grass what. And no more chapter. All the ending chapters, 28, 24, 16, 20, where it talks about the resurrection. <laughs> if it if it wasn't in the Bible. You mean if these their testimonies were not in the Bible? Yeah, this chapter of resurrection is yes. in, in the New Testament. Do you believe? No need to answer me. Okay, just reflect on it. Right. So this is all to raise our faith. Right. So let me say the other way. Like nowadays, a lot of Indians defend, including Prime Minister Modi, that India is. Whatever the, the world talks about India, right? India is poor, India is this, India is that. But the officially they quote that the biggest companies in the world today, most of the CEOs are from India. The medical or technology or whatever, you, finance, all the leading champions are either Indians or Indian born, origin Indians. Now we, even the leading politicians. So how do you feel that time when you hear that? As an Indian? Proud. Proud, proud, proud right? Mm -hmm. So the British Prime Minister is an Indian. Mm -hmm. 
and tomorrow maybe the uh, UK, US president will be Indian, right? Mm -hmm. But does it make any difference to you? No. Does it make any difference no. to you? Maybe Pastor Joseph said, I don't care about something. <laughs> <laughs> but let me put this way. Jesus is the Son of God, right? The Bible claims and we all claim is God's only Son. So he, is, he has the powers, he did a lot of miracles. So also he died on the cross. So God raised him from the dead. Yes, he is the Son of God. We can tell this story to many people. And we can listen from many people, including the, the movie, whatever, the play Ashish was showing. Yes, yeah, he can raise, God can raise him. That's okay. There are a lot of billions of people around besides us who believe that when they see, the, when they read the story. But does it make any difference to us, a difference to them, if God raised Jesus from the, from the, the dead? From death brought him to life. It's just a miracle. God has the power to do it. Same way the guy becomes UK Prime Minister or US President, doesn't make difference to me. Just we know he's Indian, yeah, we feel Indian. Yesterday the God said yes, to like the Bollywood movie Hero. Yes, Hero achieved it. No difference to me. So how about Jesus? Is, as uh, you said, now, the UK, Britain, and the US, we know him and we proudly belongs to our country. Mm. But G they don't know us, mm. but Jesus knows us. Wow. For me, that's very different. Yeah. Jesus mm -hmm. knows him. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So now that come is, to the yeah. truth. The, I claim that, uh, take that as what the Spirit promises, that God knows us, right? That's how God yes. loved us and Jesus. It doesn't matter whether it is written in the Bible or not. That the people said he stole yeah. in, or people said, you know, he rose. Uh, we have seen, uh, we did not see, or touch and see only. Then, no, I won't, I don't think so. All these things are yeah. nothing. So that is why I said, happy birthday to you. <laughs> the Easter, so far, I mean, over the years, we have learned from the scriptures and listening to one another. We know the Easter celebrations, all those things. But I want you to feel today that this is my day. My day. My day of resurrection. My day of renewal. Like that's where the newborn life experience in Christ. I am the one buried and now I am alive. Then Easter becomes meaningful for us. When you're saying this, it reminds me because my mother didn't understand this fully, but she had got to know Jesus, and she I could see that new life in her. And because her, yes, because Jesus knows her. That's the word yes, is prompting yes, from behind the relationship. She didn't fully, completely understand this about his resurrection. She would continuously ask me, and I think the depth of it she didn't understand, but the relationship was real. Yeah. I, I'm, I just want you to say this word, understand. Um, I would say maybe your mother understood more than I understood. Than okay? Yeah. So don't fall into that yeah. <laughs> word understanding. Right? Okay. So, your day, our day. I want to just um, read, uh, meditate with Pastor Joseph. Could you please read through months? Romans chapter 6, verse uh, 4 through 6. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like this, his but we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, 
So we should no longer as slaves to sin. Amen. This week, uh, in silence. All right. So you feel free now uh, from this scriptures, uh, verses, what what word touches you? What word do you pick up? Any word? Any words? Our own self being crucified. Okay. Our own self is crucified. We should no longer be slaves. Should no longer be slaves. Slave. The grip of sin that ruled over us is loosened. Mm. It's all about us. Okay? It's all about us. So take this verse if you like, meditate on it. And today, another uh, next few minutes, I'll be speaking on this one only. Not like, not like preaching, but just speaking. Um, same in a different verses. Picking up three points, or three I think maybe first to three points, that what did Christ promise to us if you believe in Him? So if we believe in Jesus, what is the promise? Right? Anyone remember? There's so many promises. So, many okay. promises. <laughs> so it's different. What did He promise Eternal to? Life. Huh? Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. What did he promise to Martha, for example? Your brother will be something like Your brother will live. live. Yeah. All right, very good. So, promise is that you shall live. You will be saved. So I want to experience that. I want. So that is what tells us about the power of resurrection. The moment you, when we believed in the Lord, Lord has already said, right? Perhaps, perhaps the disciples. It was intention, intended that way. Disciples, or minds were blocked. They need to receive the Holy Spirit to open them to understand for a purpose. But we are in the era. We are already enlightened people compared to the disciples, right? What did what they did not know about Jesus, we knew, mm -hmm. right? So then. What is cross means for us? Yesterday, or day before yesterday, we were in the TS, you know, the all the worship we talk, Jesus' crucifixion. How do you take crucifixion in your hand from now? And lastly, what is this Easter? Right? How do we live with them? How do we carry this message to one another? As the disciples did. Well, remember these four points. Okay, base scripture from here. Similar verses, I take, um, so the first one is, you shall live, right? I think Jesus spoke to uh, Mary and Martha, I think Martha most. Martha, right? He spoke to the sister, Martha. Martha, right? She said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though you are dead, yet shall live. Yes. So this is our faith. Because whether Jesus, whether it was shown or not shown, or whether how it is described is not that. Jesus said, I am the life and the resurrection. So that is what both of you are saying. Right? That your experience will know that when you believed in the Lord as Martha believed, so Christ is the Lord. He is the life and the resurrection. Romans. And if we believe that, if we declare that Jesus is the Lord, what is the promise? You will be saved. So we are not here to, you know, like, like the other day we are discussing about the different uh, religion. All our, our brothers and sisters, the people, we are not to go and talk about the religion. The different, oh, this is right, that's what you are doing. No, it is the faith. It is who the Lord is. 
And we cannot give the testimony to other person, you know, oh, if you believe the Lord, you will be saved. But when you experience it, the way you spoke, when you really know, that that's why what you are saying, that mother understand, that you know the Lord, Jesus is the Lord. And with that faith, when person confesses that yes, he is the Lord, and he is saved, or she is saved. So we just need to witness this to the, each other, when we believe it, you know. And so that is our faith. So this is called baptism. Whatever the form of baptism is given, the message, the meaning is a declaration that I believe that Jesus is the Lord and I am saved. Do you agree this? Yes. So, happy birthday to you. Feel it in, you, in your life that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my life is in Him. I shall not die. I shall live because Christ is the life and the resurrection. Colossians, I think the same, Paul writes. What is the experience you are talking about? Right? Through you, all of us, what is our experience about the Lord? It's not about. Um, Jesus has healed me or you know the, I was not well and I, I, I have recovered or I lost something, I got job. These all are, as you said, tangible experiences. You know, to feed that Lord is there for me. Uh, daily, like how the, a child, no need to prove about how loving and father and mother are. Oh, my father, uh, my father loves me so much, he gave me a, you know, mobile phone or my husband loves me so much he, she brought a ring is that beyond that isn't it so that is what ultimately that what happened to us or what is the purpose what is the promise God said he sent his beloved son that whoever believes in him will be saved so that is the experience that I, we are saved from the darkness into light so this is not that after the death we realize, you know, oh, oh now we are done. No, now, right now, that, that experience, and no one can take it away from you. Whether you have job or whether, you have, whether we are sick or suffering or next moment we are going to, doesn't matter. But you have that faith, that experience, the truth really, you know, that you feel it. Nobody can, no need to, you know, do the testings, whether this is gold or this is diamond. No, it is it. You are saved. You are in the light. Mm -hmm. And it is the Christ who brought us. So when, when we experience that, that is what meaning, the baptism means for our faith. That the Christ crucifixion or Christ willing to die for us. So that's what I asked today. Um, Someone become the president or whatever the popular, we like or we feel it could, but he is not going to do anything for you. No significant for us. But the difference about Jesus Christ is that all that the glory he received today, all, all the suffering and passion, the humiliation that he went through the other day, all is for us. And I would claim here all is for me. To rescue me, to make me better, to bring me into the light, yes. to glorify me. Jesus did not seek that glorify me, Father, because I am your son. He wants us to be glorified. He wants us to be closer to God. He wants us to be like, you know, pure. Exactly. That is the sacrifice. That's why he became the Lamb of God. So that experience... And what, when we say baptism, it is not the change of the religion. It is not the, you know, you have to go this act of service, you must do this, you know. It is that experience that I am a sinful person. And accepting it, confessing it. So my nature, I am putting down. As Christ was buried, I am putting down myself. And that is what symbolically is used when you see the immersing in the water. 
the baptism. It's not that the water, by just, you know, putting in the water we rise, we are the same person. I don't know how, the, how much the water is pure or polluted. We don't know. The different people use different water. It doesn't matter. But what is the faith? You know, there are so many types of baptisms, but the faith is important. So when you experience that, at this, whenever we think of the Christ, it's buried, means it's I, my personal, my sinful nature, I am burying it. Nobody will do that. I cannot do for you and you cannot do for me. Nothing, however holy the person may be, it is you and it is me. So that experience of at this Easter is our newness of life. Reflect on the day you were baptized. Or whatever the way you confess to the Lord, I believe in you. You declare that Jesus is the Lord. And from that day, if you go now reflect that you are experiencing your newness. And from today, you will experience more. I remember I said, first, you will not know, we shall live a newness of life in the, through the baptism, and now the crucifixion. I like this verse. When I was a child, um, we, I used to wear the cross. You know, we have the cross, different forms of cross. I'm very proud wearing the cross, you know, that people know that I'm a Christian. Yes cross. And then when I became um, young and started reading and then I read then one, one word touched. Sometimes these verses are you know very dangerous. <laughs> so I touched it. It says that I, I came across this word, not the biblical word, some way teaching. No, it's not so significant to wearing the cross. Bearing the cross is important. So from that day I said oh I don't need to wear the cross anymore. <laughs> bearing the cross. Bearing the challenges, bearing the sufferings. Like Jesus carried the cross. So that is what my inspiration in faith. But later on when I read this verse, it is not about bearing the cross. It is about preaching the cross. What is the cross? How, what you tell people? What is your belief? Again, your faith. And what, what is the power of crucifixion? The understanding and the meaning of Jesus' death on the cross. So that is why when I saw this verse a few years ago, Paul writes this. But the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So again, experience yourself. So what is, what did you experience on Good Friday. Okay, let me say Good Friday and Easter is a historical days. The day Jesus was died, it's a Good Friday and he resurrected is the Easter. But whenever you experience, whenever you feel, whenever you see a cross, whenever we talk about Jesus died on the cross, right? What is your experience? What is your understanding of for your personal life and life to others? And that is what for us cross means, crucifixion means. He was, Jesus willingly he took up. Right, that's what we all share this word, willingly he took up the cross. Not because of the Jewish people put on him or not because of the Pilate condemned him to carry the cross. Do you agree that? Mm. Yeah. So, willingly for whom? So Jesus willingly came down, that's what we sing, right? From the heaven he came, you know, willingly he came down from, from heaven, from the earth to the cross, and from the cross to the grave. And that is where I become significant. It's all for me. So when we experience that, that, that's, that through that you are redeemed, so then you shape others, the people, the forgiveness of Christ, 
the Christ dies for you, brother and sister. This is what Paul is writing. Is the wisdom to share is not the foolish people, maybe intellectuals, the great, rich, whatever, perfect, but they are perishing because they do not have the grace of Christ, or they do not understand the mercy of God, or they reject that God sent His Son. The Christmas Day we sing, right? Christ came to save, go and tell the world. But that is blocked. So they are the ones who will perish. Christ's cross and the death is not about sacrificing, like calling for sympathy. What a poor Christ, what a poor <coughs> people express sympathy. No, Christ's death is to show mercy. And that is the power. So that is why with that faith you can rebuke <coughs> anything. The, the, that is what the word that is given to me the other day speak, right? The, it is completed or finished. The death on the cross, that much power it has got. So again, I'm asking you, question to you, do you believe the power of crucifixion? There are so many people must have been crucified on the cross before Jesus and after Jesus. It's not about the punishment, it's not about the death. It's about Christ's willingness, being holy, sinless, willing to die that I and you be are saved. Mm. And today when we share that faith and we are carrying this to the people whom we want to be saved. The last one about the Easter. Okay. So the verse says, sorry, oh, I thought it's already changed. This is from the Acts. It says, with great power, the apostles continue to testify the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. So what they were testifying here? Resurrection. The resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. Now can you see one candle here and other side something? So first I would like to share about this candle. Maybe I shared in the past, I don't know. How tall is that candle? Very tall. Quite tall, right? In the Catholic Church, it is called a Paschal candle, the Easter candle. On the midnight, like yesterday night, I suppose, Easter night, the, when they celebrate the resurrection of the Christ, I was, uh, when I was a child, maybe 13 or 14 years old, from the end, boy, I, I used to be in the altar boy, and more active, more active than now. I would say um, very confidently. So one day, you know that um, candle, like this size candle, we used to have a stand, candle stand, where you put the candle on it. But the candle was so thick, new, and uh, maybe measurement was different. It was not going. And during the ceremony, you know, they couldn't put it after lighting the candle. So I always volunteered, you know, I said, okay, I'll hold it. I was holding the candle. You know, can't to lift like this and hold the candle. Means a height, right? I was holding the candle. You know the service, Easter service. That's the the longest service is Easter service. It goes around three hours. Yes. They have eight readings, prayers, songs. A lot of blessings will take place. So many. Uh, that candle. I was holding like this, and I had to stand. You know, and I don't know. Maybe I dozed off. I don't know how I slipped. So suddenly this candle came on like this, you know. And then I still balanced it and stood till the... But what my... Yesterday I was sharing with Vishal also, he said, said, none of the people, you know, come forward. <laughs> See, they know that I'm a kid, I'm standing. Anybody can come, right? Yeah. Hey, you go, I'll stand, I'll hold them. All people are good. But people don't want to take initiative. There's some kind of... Fear, I don't know, very, it's okay. But they are nice people. <laughs> I wonder that every time, and why people are like that. Suppose if I see, then I will go, right? Hey, can I, you come sit, I'll take it, I'll find them. And even it saw that, <laughs> the ranks, I always have a new shirt for Easter, even today also new shirt. <laughs> the wax falling. Next day we go there to be blessing every family. The, the, the priest or pastor carry the water, sprinkling, blessing Easter, cleansing the homes. 
So I assist them. Right? Then they tell you, yesterday you are not, you are holding the candle, they are making fun of me. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it empowered me. Whenever I think of that, instead of growing in a disliking or withdrawing from service, it helped me to grow. Oh, uh, Easter, the wax flower was great for me, great blessing. Anyway, now, the, that candle here you don't see, right? What That is the what would, it would be on the candle here. Can you see, right? Mm -hmm. right? The year. I'll so, what does it mean? How do I highlight of a pointer, right? Okay, now, where did it went? The center, sir. Oh. It's not coming on the screen. It's pointing up, yeah. All right, now we can't be seen on the screen. So, um, let's say that the first uh, candle is the Jesus Christ is the, it represents Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Okay. okay, light of the world, light. And the fire, because they make this fire in the church, they create the new fire that day. Bring the charcoal and you know, they hit the stone spark, and create yeah. the spark. With that new fire starts, the newness begins. So the fire is the resurrection. Christ is resurrected. Right? And the A, just now Pastor praying in the prayers today, he mentioned Christ is the Alpha, Alpha and Omega. Omega. Beginning and the end. I think from the uh, Revelation, the verse mm, comes, yes. Christ is Revelation. And they will put the five pins here. One, two, three, four, five. You know, they in incense. They do incense to the Lord. They put the, like a grain, any grains they take, pinks there, representing five wounds of the Christ cross, the day of the crucifixion and the cross. Um, and then the day, year, right? 2023. Every year they will have a new year. So now suppose this year is 2023. So that, that represents the resurrection today. Christ is present now. It's not about the history we are celebrating, right? So, also, the date is the timeline after death. It's actually calculated like that, right? To what death. is timeline? The timeline, because our, the way... The our, AD. Yes, the AD after death. Yeah. Is exactly yeah. how many years ago he died. It doesn't show, uh, not about how many years ago he died. The present year, now. Yeah. It represents yeah. now. But that's, that, is, that, that means how many years ago he died too. It also means Yeah, that. but yeah. Here the meaning is that Christ is, the resurrection is now. Yeah. For our, for our generation, yeah. for us today. Anyway, that's not my intention, but the, let me get back to the yeah. message. Is that, so the Easter, what is Easter for us? That's important, not about the... Mm. Candle or this, okay, leave it that. But for us, so what do we carry? Because the apostles, the verse, with the great power, the apostles continue testify the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beginning, I ask you, do you believe in the resurrection? So now you all believed this our life, I said. So what, how, and what do we testify to the people? You know, it's not about the Christ was born and the Christmas and Christmas gatherings, parties, and but uh, what is Easter means? The promise of Easter, right? So that is the resurrection, right? A new life for us. Salvation, promise of salvation. So the joy, why Christians, but many times the people ask, why Christians are so happy all of us? Even on the funeral day they say, even my own mouth says, let us celebrate the funeral service of the, that's how I yes. quote my word. Because of the resurrection. Yes. The so that is what we need to witness. And they witness so powerful because the Spirit of God is upon them. And so that is what we are. When we experience that our sinful nature is buried and we live in Christ, and what is there to be afraid of? So wherever we go, we go with the resurrection, resurrected John. The power of God is upon us. I have one more verse, I'll stop.
that you want to read? Here. Do you know that uh, short guy, the Zacharias, want to find who Jesus is? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> come to him. Oh, I saw you on this struggling to read, so it's for you. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Amen. Christ who died, more than that, who rose mm. to life, is at the right hand of the Father. And is also interceding. interceding for us. What a powerful love and blessing for us, if we believe that you are any good works and any good intention that you desire in your heart. The, day, the way you said that day you came out from here and said, if you are willing to follow, you remember that? So that then the Lord is with us, not only with us, interceding for us. If Christ intercedes for us, <laughs> So dear brothers and sisters, do you believe in Lord Jesus Christ that God has sent him because God loved us? That if you believe in him, we are saved. Do you believe? Yes. All the church are asking. Yes. Do you believe? This is a renewal of our promises in Christ. Do you believe that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that He rose, that He died on the cross, He rose again, that you will be saved. Ask a question. Do you believe? Yes. yes. Do you believe that God has raised Lord Jesus Christ and He is seated at the right hand of the Father to receive our prayers? Yes. Amen.